Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jennifer. I do videos on motherhood, lifestyle, vlogs, travel, family things, all things within that realm. And I am currently 26 weeks pregnant as I am actually filming this video. So this is our second baby. I do have a daughter, she is three years old. So I'm going to be a second time mom. And I figured this would be a great opportunity for me to film a video about baby product regrets. Now, as a first time mom, if you've been there or you're there, you're doing all the research, you're looking up all of the gadgets and tools and all the things that you're gonna need for your newborn baby. Well, I was there, I did all of that. I looked up, you know, the reviews and I did the Googling and the searching and the baby list and all the things, you know, putting together the registry, all those things, I did it, I was there. <laughs> now, having been through that season once and getting ready to go into that season again within the next few months, I was thinking back and realizing there were so many things that I bought that I didn't need or really truly didn't like and was so swayed by influencers or the reviews or this that something else you know like maybe like the shininess of the product i don't know so anyway i wanted to share my biggest regrets and what if i did purchase something instead so something else that i used in lieu of the product that i initially purchased or anything that i will be purchasing now I will have items linked below in the description box, but only the things that I recommend. And you know, we're literally just scratching the surface, so I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, but I will kind of hit the main points that really stuck out in my head, considering that the last time I had a newborn was over three years ago. So, all right, without further ado, let's jump into this video. Full disclaimer, all babies are different, all people are different, so this will not apply to everybody. Some people may love these products because they really worked for their kid. I'm just speaking from my own experience and just talking about what I'm going to be doing differently or, you know, or what I did differently. So do not, you know, take this as any medical or, you know, parenting advice that you need to follow i'm just sharing my experience so it is what it is you take it take it at that like <laughs> the first product i'm going to talk about is the nanit baby monitor oh i tell you initially when we were trying to pick out a baby monitor we i definitely felt like we needed something where we could be flexible in tracking our baby so you know all the things that it says that it can do is like you know making sure that the baby's breathing tracking the baby's sleep progress all those things the motion detection you know being able to look at your baby on your phone or an ipad or something you know it's not necessarily you have to be within your home to see your baby you know all those things sounded great very glitzy glam all those things well <laughs> first of all if you haven't already, I'm sure you might hear it, there have been horror stories of people hacking into baby monitor, like the Wi-Fi and, you know, being very creepy and like all those things. So, you know, that definitely, <laughs> that definitely creeped me out a little bit. Luckily, we had never had any of those experiences, um, but I know that it is it has happened to people. So there's that. You know that's an after the fact because we actually stopped using the baby monitor that baby monitor uh, well before I, we had heard anything like that the problem with the nanit for us one it's very expensive it's very expensive and you can buy the starter kit or any sort of like starter newborn kit but in order to keep using it to its full usage you need to buy more products so I believe you know if you wanted it just as like a monitor stand you had to buy that stand separately if you wanted to put it over the crib you needed to buy like an extra attachment so it was like all these things that 
really just the price you know kept stacking up so that's that's definitely a negative that's a con it's very expensive the other thing so yes it does track your baby's sleep and the breathing and all that stuff the only problem is that in order to track the breathing the baby needs to wear a specific swaddle or some sort of um like wrap thing it was a swaddle for the newborn obviously so that the the nanit can properly detect the baby and track their breathing well my baby hated being swaddled so <laughs> it truly just never worked for us so all all things considered the problem is that it just didn't work i'm sure for some people they love it they love seeing like you know your baby slept this much time and um, you know, you parent didn't need to attend to the baby for this much time, all that stuff. Honestly, it just drove me nuts, especially because I did not have an easy sleeper. My baby did not want to sleep in any sort of bassinet, crib, all that stuff, which is the next thing we will get into. But yeah, so considering how expensive it was, it just, it wasn't worth it. And having it on your phone, getting all those like notifications, all that stuff, it just drove me crazy. So yes, I would, I would just not recommend it for the sake of a new mother's sanity, um, unless it, it works well for you. So what I would recommend instead of the, the Nanit or some sort of Wi-Fi monitor, I would just recommend a monitor that is just on the system so you have like the separate monitor that you carry around with you i know it can be annoying to have to carry something extra around with you around the house but it's just it's just better it's safer and if you can get one that has like either a split screen so if you have you know multiple children that you need to monitor <laughs> uh, you can do that so the one that we purchased um it doesn't have a split screen but it does have like it kind of flicks back and forth between however many cameras are hooked up to it i am considering maybe changing up the monitor but we might not need to so we will use what we have for now if it comes to the point in time where we do need to have like a split screen then maybe i will switch over the next baby product regret this new bassinet again we were glitz and glammed and sleep deprived parents we were trying to figure out anything we could do <laughs> to help our baby get better sleep and so that way we could get better sleep specifically this mama right here so we did we tried out this new luckily we did not purchase this new we rented it or did the i forget what it is um the trial or whatever you call it but yeah that thing I don't know like maybe it sort of worked like once or twice um i think maybe at most once one time we got a six hour stretch but i don't know if that was the snoo itself or it was just my baby just being a baby <laughs> but god it was had we had purchased that it would have been a huge regret huge 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 because it it you know you're basically just confining your baby to this bassinet and it moves and sometimes it just like jostles them so much that you're like is this is this really safe i don't know like anyway i'm not i have no actual I, research knowledge on all that it was just it didn't work and it was not it, it was not worth the money even to try it out because you just you still have to pay for it um you just didn't have to pay the full price of it god it was yeah it was just it was just not worth it and i'm i'm happy that we tried it just for like just to know for my own like experience but yeah just yeah it was just it was just a, a big no for us <laughs> the next item that was a huge regret for us was the four moms high chair and i think there are different versions i haven't really looked into high chairs in quite some time because my daughter she no longer sits in a high chair at home but we again as <laughs> first time parents we decided to go for kind of the high end or like high tech 
baby items that would serve multiple purposes, make things easier for us, all that stuff. So we picked the Four Moms High Chair with like the magnetic like tray thing and all that stuff. Okay, first of all, this high chair is very bulky, very bulky. It does not fold at all, like nothing, like nothing folds, nothing goes away, no. <laughs> so there's that. The high chair, you can raise the level, but barely. So it really didn't meet a lot of our needs. <laughs> so there's that. Three, it was so hard to clean this high chair. And so the tray itself was not super hard to clean because, you know, it, it, it did come on and off very easily, which is, you know, that's a nice perk for sure. And it's just easier to get baby in and out of the high chair. And there is a, um, like a tray, a removable tray on top of the table that you can also take off to clean. So the, the table itself was not difficult to clean. It was the chair. The chair was a nightmare to clean because first of all, there's like a padding, like a, not silicone because it's not silicone, but um, some sort of like rubber like material padding on the chair that is supposedly removable. Well, to remove that, it was very, very difficult because of the buckles that are in the high chair, all that stuff. It was not easy. Food and all the things got into all the little crevices. It was just really not easy to clean at all. And then on top of it, like I said, n no part of this high chair folds or you know is removable except for the tray so it's not even like you could spray it down like take a part off or anything so oh my god like yeah it was it was not easy to clean at all so yeah and then number four the price it is very expensive i can't remember how much because i think it was one of our registry items and i tell you that was a huge regret we actually ended up leaving that in new york at my parents because they needed a high chair there anyway and obviously since it's just my parents in their house they could just store it away in a room when no one's there but yeah for functionality and you know being able to put it away when you don't need it all that stuff it just it was it was a big no a big big no <laughs> what i would recommend is just go for something that's simple or if you if you're on a budget, go for the Ikea high chair. That worked great for us, honestly. Like, It's not the most compact, but it's not super bulky either. So, you know, take it, take it as you will. It's nice because there's a lot of accessories that even Ikea makes for it now. Or if you want to try to purchase them from um, another seller, because uh, what is... Uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but there is a company that makes um, like foot stands for the Ikea high chair, like all these accessories that go with the Ikea high chair that makes it a little bit more comfortable for baby and a little bit cuter just in your home. So it, that's, I would recommend that if you're like on a budget, if you want to look into other high chairs that are kind of grow with your baby, I can't recommend so many because I didn't try out a bunch but you know you need to consider what's important is it about keeping it clean keeping it minimal you know being able to use it for however many years all those things you know whatever your needs are that's what you take it but I would just I would not recommend a fancy high chair because at some point they're going to get out of the high chair and they're just going to be sitting in regular chairs anyway so <laughs> it it is what it is <laughs> the next baby product regret this one I'm kind of torn on. So it is the bottle sanitizer, um, like little thing. I, I forget exactly what it's called, but I'm going to pop pictures up here, obviously. I, this one is like 75-25 for me because we did end up using it and it was nice to be able to, you know, sanitize like products, baby products, even like some toys and stuff in this little thing. However, it just wasn't super useful because, you know, for bottles, when we did use them, because we didn't use a ton of bottles, we just ended up boiling them or, 
you know, we just put them in the dishwasher and then like heat, you know, heat sanitize them that way. I don't know, it was, it just wasn't super worth it. It was, I guess it's fine maybe for some people, maybe some people love it, some people like swear by it. I don't know, it was like, eh, kind of whatever for us. So that one also got left behind and we have no plan on repurchasing that. <laughs> this one may also be controversial. And again, I'm sort of like 75, 25, maybe, maybe like 80, 20 on this <laughs> is a dedicated changing station. Now, the reason I say that is because we initially were going to set up my daughter on like a little changing pad, like on top of our dresser, just in the meantime, because when we did have our daughter, we were in the process of trying to sell our apartment and we we're actually looking for a home in New York. Obviously things have changed. We don't live in New York anymore, uh, but that's kind of what we were doing. So we weren't trying to set up like a full on nursery, but we were thinking about, you know, setting up a changing table. So we had put on our registry, the one from, I think it was from Skip Hop. It was like the little gray, like peanut looking one. We got it, ultimately decided that we, we never used it. <laughs> we never used it because we just changed baby wherever she was. So we just, I just had like a caddy. I had like two like, like setups, like one for the living room, one in the bedroom. And we just changed her anywhere. We changed her on the couch. We changed her on the floor. We changed her on a mat. Like it didn't make sense to pick up baby, bring her to a dedicated space just to change her when we could grab a diaper and a, a mat and some wipes and just change her right there. So that is why I feel like it's just not necessary to have a changing station, but some people love it. Some people live and swear by, you know, they love to have that set up. I don't know. It just, it didn't make sense. Maybe it was like you could have a changing station set up with, you know, your extra like caddies and kits set up in other places of the house, but having just like one dedicated area, it just didn't make sense. That is a personal opinion, personal experience, but it is what it is. The last category kind of compiles a bunch of items. So it's like newborn baby clothing but not clothing like okay i'm just gonna i'm not even gonna give it a category because i don't know what category to give it but it's going to be swaddles burp cloths bibs baby socks and mittens <laughs> i'm just kind of throwing it all there so first let's start with the swaddles swaddles so first of all i already mentioned this but my daughter hated being swaddled like zero did not love it at all i was one of those moms that was like, well, maybe if I tried a different swaddle, maybe she'll like this one, maybe she'll like this one. I went through a ton. I did the, just the regular blanket, you know, with um, the swaddle blanket. I tried that method. I tried the swaddle that came with our Nanit monitor. I tried the swaddle that comes with the snoo. I tried the, um, the nested zen bean nested bean it's the one with like the weight on there which by the way you should not use because um i believe that there was some sort of warning or alert from that i don't specifically recall but anyway yeah it was like the one with the weighted bean for the baby it's supposed to mimic like the parent's hand on their chest we tried that one. Oh my god yeah so we went through a bunch overall swaddles didn't work and i would just not recommend if your baby doesn't like being swaddled, I would just not recommend going through and buying all of these different swaddles to see if they like a different swaddle. If they don't like being swaddled, chances are they just don't like being swaddled. So that was a huge regret. I bought so many of those and none of them worked. And I just wish I had, I wish I had known better or someone would have told me. <laughs> the swaddle I would recommend if your baby doesn't like being swaddled is the love to dream one. And that's the one where they look like a little starfish. <laughs> Um, my daughter actually didn't mind this one because it was more like a sleep sack than a swaddle. So it did kind of, you know, it was tight, like it was like it hugged her body, but it had her arms free should she want her hands, like, you know, to put in her mouth or whatever. She wasn't being like contained in that way. So I think that's why she liked it better and it was easier to 
use that swaddle um, when we transitioned out of the swaddle phase and into sleep sacks and all the things like that. So I would actually recommend that one, especially if your baby does not like being swaddled. The next part, so in terms of like burp cloths and swaddle blankets and all that stuff, you don't need a ton of these. The burp cloths, maybe you could have, you know, a bunch. I bought like a 10 pack of the white muslin ones, but really you're gonna be doing a ton of laundry as a new mother or a, another mother, a second time mother, if you're any sort of, any time mother, you're gonna be doing a ton of laundry anyway. So it's just enough to have where you could use. If the baby spits up, you have a backup and then a backup backup. So maybe like three. So that includes the blankets, the swaddle blankets that you're just gonna use maybe just as regular blankets, the muslin burp cloths and bibs, you just need enough to have a backup and then a backup for the backup. I bought so many, so many bibs, so many burp cloths, so many blankets, didn't need, definitely didn't need all of them. And you definitely don't need the ones that are not the muslin material because they, the other ones don't do anything. They might be soft and cute and have prints or whatever, but they don't do anything. So if you're going to purchase them, go with the muslin. <laughs> And then the last part, baby socks, baby mittens, you don't need them. <laughs> you don't need them. You don't need baby socks because they're gonna come off anyway and there's just no point. You don't need baby mittens because again, they're just gonna take them off and they're just kind of, they're cute, but they're kind of silly. Go instead for the onesies, pajamas, the footed and pajamas, and then the ones with the hands that you can fold the material over if the baby is at a point where they're still kind of scratching their face. Okay, so that is kind of the roundup of the baby product purchases that I regret or just really just didn't use, didn't felt like I needed, were unnecessary. Now again, this is, I wanna say that this is just from personal experience. It does not apply to everybody. It does not apply to every person or baby or any situation. So take it with a grain of salt, take it as you will. This is just, what didn't work for us and what we did instead and hopefully it was helpful to you whether you are a first time mom or a second or third or fourth whatever however times <laughs> mom you are but yeah so anyway i appreciate you watching this video i hope you enjoyed and found the information useful like i said anything that i would recommend i have listed um and linked in the description box below and yeah, stay tuned for more baby content along with our usual regular lifestyle vlogs and all those things. So, all right, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever?